It all started as a message in my mailbox one morning. Having my morning coffee and a cigarette, I decided to walk out to the mailbox and check my mail. I had bought this house from an auction at a very low price. It was a quiet country. I, being a city kid, had no idea what country life was like until I made a few friends. With the purchase of the house came a hundred acres of cropland that, in the autumn, blossomed into golden produce that swayed beautifully in the wind. I put on my shoes and headed out on the road, still slightly groggy upon opening the mailbox. I found a dead bird inside. At first, I thought it was some stupid kids playing pranks again. Last week, they decided to put toilet paper on my lawn. I pulled the dead bird out and threw it on the ground. It was all mangled to a pulp almost as if a dog had gotten a hold of it. Gross. Besides the bird, there was nothing in the mailbox. I started to think that maybe the kids had stolen my mail, but eventually I brushed it off and told myself I'd get up early in the morning and watch the mail come so I could catch the jerks in the act. The next morning arrived and the mailman came as usual. I walked out, got my mail, not thinking anything of it. The next morning was the same. The next week came and I walked out to get my mail once again. This time I was horrified at the sight. My white mailbox had blood smeared all over it. I opened the mailbox cautiously. Inside was a mangled cat. I gasped and covered my mouth, quickly choking back the vomit that was rising to my throat. I rushed to the garbage, put on a pair of gloves, and pulled the poor animal out. Stapled to it was a note, fairly legible but crude nonetheless. On the note was simply a smiley face. I was disgusted at that. Whoever did it thought it was funny. I gave the cat a proper burial and continued my day. The next morning I woke up around 5 a.m., walked out and checked the mailbox again to see if anything had been tampered with. The cat I had just buried in my backyard was stuffed inside yet again. This time another note was attached to it. This one had a frowning face under it, which read, You don't like my present? Pissed off and finally fed up, I decided to bury it yet again and to stay up all night to watch my mailbox to find out to see who was doing this. The time rolled by. 12 a.m., 1 a.m., 2 a.m., nothing at all. Then, at 3 a.m., I finally saw a movement across the road. And... Out of the cornfield, there was a figure into my yard. I watched it until it finally came under the security light. What I saw, I, I can't even begin to explain. It was a man. Or at least I think it was. It was hunched over like an old man with long, gangly arms. And it went further than an average human. And its head... Its head was bent downwards as if it was looking at something that had been dropped on the ground. The man, or rather thing, looked frail and weak, but it moved with great speed. I quickly and quietly moved back to the window and peered as I saw it dig up the cat once again, and it held it in its arms. It stroked the cat as if it were alive and quickly hurried around to the front of my house. I scurried to the front window again and watched as it made its way back into my mailbox once more put the cat inside before disappearing into the darkness. That day, I didn't leave my house. I was too shocked at what happened. I slept a bit and then decided to take a trip to the store. When I came back, I checked the mailbox again, and there it was. The same cat I'd just buried. I went to take the dead cat out of my mailbox once again and bury it in a different spot. Then to stay up again that night to see what happened. With a flashlight in hand, I watched out my front window as I saw the long, spindly man come out to the field and jog into my yard, to the spot where I just buried the cat the day before, and he started to dig up with his hands. I slid open the sliding glass door and stepped outside, turning on the flashlight. I aimed it at the man and yelled, What are you doing? The man turned around to face me. And that's when I saw the thing for the first time. In plain sight, its body looked like it had been mauled by a bear. Its clothes ripped, rotting skin showing through. 
its teeth completely exposed and jagged, and the eyes sunken in. I quickly ran back inside as it gave a shrieking sound and hopped over in my direction. I slid the glass door shut and locked it, and grabbed the pistol I had bought for myself. I got it from under the couch. I loaded one bullet in the chamber. I shined the light at the door and waited. A glob of something hid the glass door, and I instinctively shot the bullet, which found its mark on my wall. I walked to the glass door and shined the light down it to see a mess of entrails was scattered across the bottom and blood smeared across the glass. Sick to my stomach, I choked back the vomit that was rising to my stomach. I quickly rushed back to the couch that was against the wall and sat there with my eyes fixed upon the glass door, my flashlight off. Outside, I could see the moonlight through the gruesome mess that was plastered upon the glass. I saw a figure approach the door. I was frozen in fear, waiting for it to break the glass and try to take my life from me. After smearing the blood, it turned around and walked away. I swear I could hear a faint chuckle, like a smoker's lungs laugh. But in a way, that emphasized the rasp of deteriorating breaths. I sat on the sofa that didn't budge. I don't know how long I waited, but after a while, the room became light as the sun rose in the sky. I looked around the house. Everything was so quiet. Then fixed my eyes on the glass door. Smeared across it were handprints, usually long fingers, and a smiley. The same one on the letter. I sighed and tried to make myself comfortable, laying down and resting my eyes, but still as alert as possible. A few hours later, I awoke from a nightmare and propped myself up on the couch. After a short while, I got up and prepared to clean away the aftermath of last night's encounter. I was, apparently, pissing whatever it was off, and I was getting more scared just by the second of thinking whatever was out there lurking. I cleaned the entrails off the ground and went to check my mail. When I came across a plain letter, curious, I opened it up and felt a chill shoot up my spine. The letter had no words, only a smile. The same crude smile that was on the letter stapled to the cat on the sliding glass door. I quickly crumbled it up and tossed it on the ground. I left that night. I went to stay with my parents up in the city for a few weeks. Not explaining my situation to them, I simply told them that I'd been sick of country life and needed a change for a few weeks. They happily let me in. I returned to my home three weeks later. Horror was stricken across my face, for my house was not as I left it. As soon as I walked in, the stench of rotting carcass hit my nostrils and I vomited on the floor, covering my nose with my shirt. I proceeded to the light switch. Turning on the light made me shriek in terror. Scattered throughout my house were entrails of carcasses and of dead animals. Some were propped up like humans on the couch. And they all were staring at me as I stood horrified in the doorway. All over the white walls were smiley faces and the writing over and over, I'm very angry with you. I'm very angry with you. I'm very angry with you. It was all written in blood. I lifted up the couch seat and looked at my pistol. There was no pistol. The pistol was gone. Just then I saw something in the hallway, moving steadily back and forth, flipping on the hallway light. There it was again, the creature who had tried to kill me the night before I had left. I had snapped into its gaze, and it moved its mouth into a sickening smile. It jumped up and started to walk in my direction. I quickly turned around and ran outside, slamming the door behind me. I got into my car, started up, and proceeded to back out of my driveway. Behind me, I saw the figure in the rearview mirror running up to my car. Its arms slammed into the trunk, and it proceeded to hop on the top of my car. I shifted to drive and slammed on the gas. I drove all night as far as I could away from that house, those dead animals, that thing. As soon as I was within city limits, I decided to buy some gas, seeing as I was almost empty. I pulled into the gas station and got out of my car. My eyes widened as I saw the trunk had been completely bashed in. I quickly pumped the gas and left for my parents' house. 
Four months later, I'm living in an apartment, dealing with the occasional nightmares at times, but can never be happier to get away from that house and the monster that lives there. I just checked my mail from the morning and received a letter with no return address. Inside, written a crumpled up paper with a crudely drawn smiley face with the words, You can't hide. <laughs>